Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for this delay related to some technical problems that uh, we experience here in Paris. Uh, I'm uh, Farid Yaker, in charge of sustainable public procurement in UNEP DTIE, Division of Technology, Industry and Economics, based in Paris. I'm really pleased to be with you for this second webinar. Uh, I'm going to present the activities of UNEP in Asia Pacific. And then we will have a presentation from Dr. Kwong and from Mr. of Ms. Nguyen Tanga from the Vietnam Environmental Administration. And we will have a presentation from Ms. Lanchakorn Pratumratana and from Kanchana Tete Bazuvat from GIZ Thailand on the progress on harmonization of eco labels in Southeast Asia and SCP in Southeast Asia. So this webinar takes place in the framework of the, the project strengthening the capacities and improving the knowledge on green public procurement and eco-labeling in the ASEAN Plus region. It's a project funded by the Ministry of Environmental Protection of China and KT and implemented by UNEP. The objectives are to strengthen SPPA and eco-labeling in the ASEAN region. Now we have broadened and uh, we can see the Asia-Pacific region uh, and we try to uh, convey and disseminate the expertise of China, Japan and the Republic of Korea in the combined use of SPP and eco-labeling. The idea also is to enhance, enhance South-South co collaboration on those topics and ensure a broad and effective participation of uh, the Asia-Pacific countries in the activities of the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production and more specifically the SPP program of this framework of programs. So uh, the project has four objectives. The first one is the creation of an ASEAN Plus 3 network. Now we have renamed it Asia Pacific GPPEL network and the network was created uh, in 2013. It assembled first in Seoul, then we had subsequent meetings in Bangkok and Beijing and we should have a meeting in December 2015. We're not sure yet where it will take place, but most probably it will be in Japan. The second objective is to develop case studies on GPP and eco-labeling implementation. We had four initial case studies uh, developed on China, Japan, Republic of Korea, and Thailand, and now we have seven more on the way from those countries that are developed by Green Purchasing Network Malaysia. We also undertaking a comparative study on the experiences or the, the, the systems of uh, Ecolabel and GPP of those four more advanced countries in the region and the study will be used to develop training modules and that will be used in uh, a training workshop that should take place that should take place in November in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Yeah, so I was uh, mentioning the four objectives, so I mentioned the creation of the, the network, which is one of the, the main achievements. Then we have the case studies, and I mentioned that we are undertaking right now a comparative study of the four more advanced countries, and this will be the basis for uh, a training material. Then we are also uh, sharing the knowledge through uh, the training that will take place, but also through the webinars and also all the meetings that we're organizing in, in the region. And we're trying to link to the 10YFP uh, SPP program, uh, basically by making sure that uh, the, the case studies that are uh, undertaken and produced in the region go also and benefit uh, the rest of the world. Next one. What we, UNEP is doing in the region is also uh, undertaking grant projects. So we have what we call the SPP and eco-labeling project that runs until 2017. And uh, this is funded by the European Commission. The idea is to stimulate the demand and supply of sustainable products and we try to provide capacity development, technical assistance for governments to develop SPP policies and we, uh, we try also to promote the use of eco-labeling in combination with uh, SPP. So here you can see the countries where UNEP is implementing the SPP approach in order 
to implement uh, SPP in, in various countries. You see that there is a number of countries in South America, but we have also now uh, an increasing number of countries in Asia. Uh, currently, we are assisting Mongolia, India, and Vietnam, and we have discussions ongoing with Sri Lanka and Maldives to start SPP implementation in those countries. So in those three countries, uh, the situation is the following. In India, in India we, we have a focus on eco-labeling. We have uh, just signed a funding agreement, so the project is about to start. In Mongolia, uh, the SPP is part of uh, a larger project which is called the Partnership for Action on Green Economy. The progress to date is that we have uh, finalized the institutional arrangement. We have developed the status assessment. Uh, which is the initial situation, the baseline study on uh, the SPP situation, and we are currently developing the legal review. Vietnam will be covered by uh, my friends Kyung and Tonga in the next presentation. We also should mention the regional component of uh, the SPEL project. So we work with a research institute, which is called the Asia Institute of Technology, uh, and the idea is to increase collaboration on eco-labeling in the region in the context of GPP. Uh, the study will start in September 2015 and it will be first presented in, in the annual conference of uh, the network in December 2015 and we look forward, forward to receiving your input uh, then. Next one. And here I'm ready to hand over to uh, Kyung and Tanga and thank you very much. And uh, again, apologies for the delay. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you, Farid and uh, Julie. And uh, as uh, Farid already mentioned in his presentations that uh, uh, Vietnam is one of the core countries uh, in the uh, in the SPELL uh, projects to uh, apply the methodology developed by UNEP to uh, uh, incorporate the system of public procurement and green label uh, uh, within this project, so uh, I would uh, uh, like to briefly uh, explain uh, how we, uh, uh, what we achieve uh, uh, within uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, program and and cooperation uh, projects. So the presentations uh, that I will I going to give will uh, have uh, for. Uh, Part. Uh, next, please, Julie. And the first one is uh, when uh, I will present on the result uh, from the projects that uh, we, uh, 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 after undertaking the assessment of the SPP uh, practice in Vietnam. Uh, the second part will be uh, on uh, Vietnam Green Label Program, and the third part will be on potential uh, for implementation of SPP in Vietnam, and the last uh, part will be some conclusions and recommendation. Next, please. Julie, next, please. Thank you. Um, so for uh, the status of uh, implementations of the sustainable public procurement in uh, Vietnam, uh, after the review and, uh, and the assessment, so we uh, uh, have come up to, uh, with the following uh, points. Uh, first thing is uh, the uh, law on procurement uh, number 61 uh, dated 2005 is the highest uh, legislative document uh, relating to the public procurement. So in the law it uh, said that um, the governmental organizations and agency participating in the public procurement system include uh, state agency, political organizations, social political organizations, professional social political organizations, professional social organization uh, and um, people armed forces, independent public service delivery unit, state corporation and enterprises are the uh, 
object uh, and uh, the object to uh, follow the uh, follow this law. So uh, since uh, 2008, uh, Vietnam uh, has applied the mechanism of decentralized public procurement. Uh, that means the, the public procurement uh, uh, is undertake, undertook by uh, each ministry or each uh, people's committee in the provinces or each uh, state corporation. Uh, that that, that uh, example. And uh, according to the survey uh, conducted in 2014, uh, public spending in Vietnam represent between uh, 20 to 30 percent of the total government budget. Next, please. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, most uh, important uh, stakeholder uh, uh, relating to the public procurement, uh, the ministry uh, like uh, MPI, uh, like uh, Ministry of Plan Planning and Investment, uh, Ministry of uh, Finance, Ministry of uh, National Resource Environment, and Ministry of uh, industry and trade are the most uh, important uh, stakeholders uh, that influence the implementation of the sustainable, sustainable public procurement. Uh, those uh, ministries also uh, are the biggest public buyer and uh, therefore uh, this ministry is uh, highly involved in the national public procurement system. For the mandate and responsibility of uh, different ministry, uh, for MPI, uh, 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 the ministry is responsible for the comprehensive state management of all the procurement activities uh, in the countries, uh, including the public procurement. The uh, Ministry of Finance uh, also has uh, important roles in the public procurement. Uh, which is to support other ministry, central agency, and provincial people committee to establish uh, unit or department for centralized public procurement. Uh, there is uh, two department under the ministry, uh, which is the uh, uh, department for tax policy and the department for public assessment are the, are the key departments in this. Uh, in the Ministry of Finance who uh, directly uh, dealing with the uh, public procurement. Uh, Ministry of National Resource and Environment uh, is responsible for state management of uh, national resource and, and environment uh, protections. Uh, the VEA and the MONVE is responsible for environmental protection activities at national level. And there's one uh, very important responsibility is uh, for VA is VA uh, uh, is uh, managing and and uh, and uh, uh, managing the green label program. Uh, next, please. In. Uh, 2007, uh, the uh, Ministry of Finance issued an instruction uh, on decentralized uh, public procurement. So, uh, according to this uh, instruction, uh, ministry, government agency, and people committee at all level are uh, responsible for themselves for procurement activities uh, within their organizations. Uh, after uh, some time of applying this uh, uh, model, the, there is a conclusion that the decentralized uh, procurement op approach uh, regulated by the uh, above uh, instruction is uh, not uh, 
not uh, really suitable uh, in the practice. So the Ministry of, of Finance uh, modified the, the instructions uh, and, and, and uh, according to the, the modifications, the Department of Public Procurement uh, uh, under uh, the MPI managed the public procurement on behalf of all ministry and uh, governmental agency. So that means uh, the uh, from the decentralized procurement approach uh, is uh, is uh, 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 transforming to the uh, centralized uh, procurement approach. That that is uh, the, the 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 trend for for this. So the the scheme show the uh, uh, the organizations uh, within the MPI f uh, f uh, for management of the procurement activities. So we have MPI, we have Department Procurement Management, and we have uh, uh, under the department we have the Centers for Procurement Support, and we have uh, bidding review uh, uh, committees, and all there is also. Uh, uh, public procurement website uh, already established and uh, 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 a little number of the procurement activities are already uh, implemented through uh, this website. Next please. Uh, relating to the issues of budget, budget management, uh, this uh, um, this uh, issue is is uh, is, um, is uh, uh, managed by Ministry of Finance, and there is a uh, circular issues by the Ministry, uh, the circular number 60, uh, 63, and there is uh, some uh, important point related to um, budget uh, for public procurement. Uh, the first thing of point is uh, uh, state budget appointed by the state authority for annual expenditure uh, for of the central agency. Uh, credit capital authorized by the state, uh, other capital managed by the state, and the grant finance support budget capital from international and dom domestic donor, and uh, income from fee. Uh, which is EU and managed according to national regulation or income from operation funds, social security, and other appropriate income according to the uh, national regulation. So the, uh, in general, the circular uh, uh, identify uh, this uh, source of budget uh, income is, uh, is, uh, is uh, Use uh, and is used for the public procurement. Uh, next, please. So uh, there is uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, three uh, popular bidding man methods in uh, public procurement. Uh, the first one is uh, public uh, bidding, and this. Uh, this uh, method is the uh, most popular in the practice for uh, the public procurement. The second uh, popular uh, method is a competitive quotation offer. And the third one, the third popular one is uh, limited uh, bidding. So uh, the, the for the uh, public procurement bidding methods, the, the, the most popular uh, one is uh, the public bidding, where you uh, can have uh, unlimited number of, of the tenders to submit their the proposal. Next, please. So with the... Uh, 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 different uh, uh, di different uh, regulations in terms of the uh, procurements and the and the uh, public procur uh, sustainable public procurement this, the integration of uh, sustainability criteria in the supplier and bid evaluation is a very important uh, the 
evaluation method for public procurement bidding documents include uh, service price method, state budget contribution method, state benefit and social benefit method, and integrate approach. Uh, that is uh, that is the the the, the requirement uh, uh, according to regulation and laws. And uh, there is a main criteria for evaluating uh, the bidding document, uh, including the experience and capaci capacity assessment, technical criteria, financial criteria, regularly the supply are evaluated based on criteria for demonstrating their capacity to supply the. Uh, for example, the financial stability, quality, service, performance. Uh, under the law on procurement, sustainable criteria, uh, including social and environmental criteria, uh, are, not, uh, still, um, are not listed as the main criteria for evaluating the renderer. Uh, some uh, sustainable criteria were developed, but uh, there is no uh, application for public procurement to integrate them into the public procurement procedures. So uh, that's why the uh, the uh, the uh, sustainable criteria are not not uh, mm, in some cases are, uh, are miss or they they just avoid uh, just uh, uh, just. Uh, Neglected in uh, in 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 some of the procurement activities, uh, and at the moment there is uh, no national regulation uh, uh, related to SPP in Vietnam. Next, please. So the next slide will uh, 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 give you a uh, brief information on the green label programs, uh, which is managed by VEA. Uh, the green label program was established in 2009 by Ministry of National Resources and Environment. Uh, the objective is to enhance the uh, sustainable use of natural resources and environmental protection by encouraging petro or environmental friendly productions and consumption uh, certified by the Vietnam uh, government. Uh, the standards, uh, the, the Vietnam Green Label Program is Taiwan uh, Eco Labeling Program uh, following ISO 14024. And the, the standard is based on the life cycle assessment, uh, which is focusing on pollution control through production of disposal of products. Next, please. Uh, the program was established in 2009, but uh, recently Vietnam revised the uh, law on environmental protection, and the law, new law is um, uh, uh, issued in 2014, and there is uh, some imp very important uh, clauses uh, relating to the green label programs. Uh, uh, especially, there is a requirement that uh, organization and individual shall give the priority to purchase uh, of the environmental friendly products under the guidance of the Ministry of Natural Resources uh, and Environment. So that, that it is a very important uh, requirement to uh, assist the implementation, implement uh, to develop the green label uh, uh, products also to uh, facilitate the implementation implementation of SPP in Vietnam. Next, please. So this uh, slide shows how the uh, organization structure for green, lab green label uh, program. So we have the Monve there, and the Monve is responsible for uh, develop developing the policy and technical guidelines for green label. Uh, criteria, uh, 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 um, promulgations, and also monitoring the uh, uh, programs. And under uh, the VA, there is uh, uh, technical commissions uh, from uh, established by VEA. Uh, the, the commission uh, has uh, demanded to survey 
the demand on the market and drafting standard as well as the assessing the technical issue of eco-labeling documents. And there uh, is uh, under the ministry there is uh, the, the consulting council uh, which uh, implement the uh, uh, consulting uh, uh, functions to assist the, the ministry to approve the criteria or to uh, uh, criteria or to um, to to uh, um, uh, assess the 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 um, whether the company can uh, receive the award or not. So and under uh, that there is um, um, office we we call the Vietnam Green Labor Office we who undertaking the uh, uh, daily tasks for the uh, to assist the the both council and technical commissions uh, uh, in in the uh, on the uh, green label uh, program activities. Next, please. So the uh, this. Uh, um, Scheme show the standard uh, develop, development uh, process for developing the criteria for uh, different category of products or different uh, different uh, uh, cat uh, category of uh, each uh, each kind of product. Next, please. So this uh, slide show uh, how to, uh, a company or enterprise uh, apply uh, and receive the uh, uh, green label awards. So there is a requirement on how many days uh, the office has to uh, review the uh, profile, review the applications, and uh, how to uh, um, how. Uh, Different procedure to to get a, a green label uh, uh, award. So next please. So for the uh, reviewing of the application, there is uh, a number of issue, important issue that a product has to meet, uh, and the the um, office and the uh, council will review. Uh, um, uh, first thing is uh, the price, the new characters, the safety of the products, uh, the Im impact to the human health society, environment, uh, functionality, quality, and productivity. That is the uh, the the importance um, important aspects for reviewing uh, every product. Next, please. Next, please. So at the moment, uh, we have uh, issues 14 uh, criteria uh, for uh, criteria for 14 criteria uh, category of products. So that is uh, including paper office, battery. Uh, uh, coating product, printer, uh, laptop, ceramic, and etc. So we still have a very little number of the criteria for categories of the products. Next, please. Uh, and uh, at the at the moment, uh, the VA Monve uh, already. Give the certificate to uh, 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 four um, companies uh, with the uh, green labels uh, products. So there is a, a company, the Viet Quang company, for uh, for the uh, for the lamps, and for also for the pen company for. Uh, Electronics uh, appliance company and for uh, detergent company. 
So very, very few uh, company already uh, received the certificate. Next, please. So uh, with the um, assessment of the status of the SPP and as well as the eco label, we uh, uh, have identified some opportunities. Uh, the first thing is uh, many policy, uh, strategy, and national plan with which have both direct and indirect connection uh, and relation with SCP in general, with SPP in particular, uh, already there in our system. And SPP has a great potential of implemented implementation at the moment in the context of centralized public procurement according to decision uh, 179 issued by the Prime Minister in 2007. And we also uh, have uh, a lot of support from central agency state our enterprises on the issues of promoting SPP in Vietnam. Uh, next please. But at the same time, we uh, uh, also have a lot of challenges. Uh, first thing is law enforcement of legal framework and insufficient coordination between uh, public body uh, related to the uh, uh, SPP. And uh, the implementation of SPP, especially the integration of sustainable criteria in the whole uh, procurement process, uh, as required in uh, a number of the legal documents, uh, still uh, weak and need to be enforced and need to be uh, uh, more uh, more uh, details and in in the in in, in the um, legal documents related to the pro uh, procurement, and uh, also the different ministry uh, issues different uh, uh, regulations so there is a loose connection and, and integration between uh, the, the, the regulations uh, issues by the different ministries also one of the uh, difficulties for implementation of the SPP and also the the procure for the procurement officers the awareness and also the uh, technical capacity has been very low and also there is uh, also challenges for um, lack of training, uh, training material on SPP and it also uh, uh, affect the implementation of the SPP in, in uh, Vietnam. So next please. So there is uh, some uh, conclusions uh, that we withdraw from the uh, uh, assessment and the first one is the public procurement system has been built uh, related perfect but uh, with, um, with a clear regulation and re on regulation processes and procedure and there is uh, initial efforts on introducing and raising awareness on SPP by the government and related ministry sectors, both direct and indirect approach. The uh, uh, will have achieved initial results. And in the procurement practices and procedure aspect, the regulation on creating priority for enterprises applying social was already uh, mentioned in the, the law and, uh, and under law document, uh, legal, legal documents. Um, the environmental protection criteria are, uh, at the moment apply for the energy saving products. Uh, for other uh, products in uh, the whole, uh, they still need a lot of uh, criteria to, the, to be developed for many uh, products to be included in, in the uh, requirements. And there, um, still, Vietnam is still face a lot of uh, obstacles when applying SPP. Next, please. So there we come up with some the, the recommendations. The first one is several regulations related to SPP need to be developed soon 
and a program to introduce and promote SPP at the national level should be developed and carried out including communication activities to raise awareness, enhance capacity for procurement officers, and develop training material which instruct integration of sustainable criteria into public procurements. Uh, and a uh, very important point is that uh, the eco labeling programs also need to be uh, much, much more uh, developed and widely introduced uh, and uh, um, integrated uh, successfully in the SPP programs. Uh, for the companies, for the supplier, for the service provider, they also need uh, uh, to raise their awareness on SPP and uh, go uh, along with the uh, uh, eco label products and also the product that meet en uh, uh, environmental uh, criteria so to uh, respond to the need of the uh, uh, public uh, uh, procurement uh, office and also the uh, government office and, and the ministry. So that is um, uh, my uh, presentations on what we have done so far for uh, the EA and uh, uh, thank you very much and very much uh, very sorry for taking a lot of uh, uh, the time and uh, okay so uh, thank you Julie thank you uh, all very much okay thank, thank you very much Paul for the uh, comprehensive presentation it is very insightful now we would like to um, introduce you to the next presentation. This is by GIZ. Um, okay, before we go to the next presentation, I would just like to let you know that um, we will have a Q&A session um, at the end after all the presentations. We have one more presentation. So, I will now give the floor to Ms. Lanjakon, please. Okay. okay, thank you, Julie. Uh, hello, everyone. Lanjakon from GISA Thailand, um, from the project called the Sustainability Consumption and Production for Low Carbon Economy, Low Emission Public Procurement and Eco Leveling. So today I would like to present about the progress on the harmonization of eco level in Southeast Asia. Next, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, actually, uh, in harmonization of the eco levels, we are focusing on the doing kind of like mutual recognition agreement. First uh, is the MRA among the Thai Green Label and Hong Kong Green Label scheme. Um, actually, in the fe February 2015, uh, GISAT and Thailand Environment Institute organized a meeting with the Thai manufacturers uh, regarding the list of the products and the countries that um, the manuf Thai manufacturers would like the Thai Green Label to have the MRA with and we come out with the request that uh, the companies uh, would like TEI to have uh, MRA with Hong Kong Green Council and in this state uh, GISAT has facilitated the process on the exchanging information and drafting of the MRA and now the MRA has been finalized and will be signed during the Gen annual meeting uh, in the October this year in Hong Kong. Next slide please. And the other um, MRA that uh, GISAT is uh, still facilitated and working on is the MRA among Thai Green Label and Serum Eco Label of Malaysia. And now it is on the progress 
of the, the process of the drafting the options uh, sorry the options of the MIA was proposed to TEI and CRIM since uh, December 2014 and now it is the ongoing process of exchanging information about the certification procedure. Next slide please. And the other activities which I would like to update is uh, we had a technical workshop on harmonization of the Type 1 eco levels in selected countries of Southeast Asia through the Common Core criteria in March 2015 in Bangkok, Thailand. In that event, there were about 30 participants from four countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines and Thailand. Uh, all of them are the in-charge persons of the national GPP and eco levels. The objective of the event was to develop the common core criteria for the selected products which can lead to mutual or multilateral recognition agreement among the type 1 eco levels in selected countries of the Southeast Asia. And the second was to uh, discuss the opportunities for cooperation within the framework of the new project which will follow after the SCP for LCE or we call advanced SCP. Next slide please. And the output that we've got from the, the workshop are first is the draft common core criteria of three products which are the multifunction printers, fluorescent lamps and uh, fiber cement board were preliminarily agreed for working towards the MRA. The second is the action plan for of each eco-labeling program. It was developed for further step towards uh, signing MRAs based on common core criteria. And the third one is the opportunities for the cooperation within the new project has been preliminarily discussed and formulated. Next slide, please. Um, in conclusion, uh, the MRA between the Thai Green Label with the Hong Kong and the Malaysia uh, CIRIM is uh, kind of like a generally first step of cooperation among the Type 1 Eco Labels and the common core criteria uh, developed by the workshop will lead to the higher level of the uh, MRA between the eco levels. And that's all from my part and next I would like to pass the presentation to Kun Kanchanetri. She will present about the SCP in Southeast Asia Achievement and Advancement. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, I think this will be presented by my colleague. She's here. Put him in, but you haven't uh, opened the microphone for her yet. Um, she, she is not um, listed in the Oh, sorry, I cannot hear you clearly. Okay, 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 I found her. Okay, now. Okay. 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 Hello. Hello. Please, please, please go ahead. Anyone hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. 
My name is Kanshaneti Waswat. I work with the GIZ and now our project is on the SCP 4 fe which Dr. Lanshakon just uh, present our some even in the past. Now we have the incoming event in the next month. Um, it means in the next week. We call SCP in Southeast Asia Achievement and Advancement event. Next slide, please. Actually, the event, because um, the initiative from the SCP for CE project will be an end up in, in soon. So we are planning to organize uh, this event to, to be held in Bangkok. And the event will organize to present the achievements of the SCP Pro for RSPE projects and launch the or to pass to present or the achievement and lesson learns of the SCP for RSPE and also introduce the new projects, advancing and measuring sustainable consumption and production for a low carbon economy in middle income and newly industrial countries. We named on the advanced SEP. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Hmm. Okay. Julie, next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Um, the background of the event, as I mentioned, um, SCP for LCE is a start since um, 2012. The project is um, had the main project pioneer as the Pollution Control Department, Thailand, Thailand Environment Institute. TEI, FTI is a Federation of Thai Industries and TGO, Thailand Greenhouse Gas Management Organization, public organizations. We are looking forward to sharing the achievement and experience of the last three years until 2015, until now. The main objective of the projects funded by BMUB is stand for Federal Ministry for the environment, nature, conversation, buildings, and nuclear safety, Germany, were to expand existing eco level to cover climate protection criteria and to strengthen green public procurement in Thailand and in other selected countries in Southeast Asia. Next slide, please. And for advanced SCPs, um, since 2012, based on German and international good practice, the IKI projects, SCP for RCE, introduced climate criteria for both GPP and eco leveling in Thailand. The experience has been shared with other GPP and eco leveling agencies of other countries in the regions. For example, in collaborations with UNEP, and regional ASEAN Pastry include China, Korean, and Japan. Networking workshop on green and sustainable public procurement and eco levels. The projects at One ACP is building up on the achievements and will focus on eight countries across three regions. It includes Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Activities will focus on institutions no strengthening the designs of integrated policy framework, technical capi capabilities developments, implementations of sustainable information system and knowledge transfer. Next slide, please. And I would like to share the lovely tentative agendas of the event, which in this program we also invites all the participants to jointly plan the tree together to give the first small contribution to greenhouse gas reduction together. Next slide, please. And if uh, you would like to know more about uh, this event and would like to join, please feel free to send me the email. I'm willing to assist 
all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Kanchana TV. Thank you. Um, we will be, UNEP will be at the event next week. That's for sure. Okay, now we would like to open the floor. If you have any questions. Please raise your hand if you have any questions you would like to ask. Or if you have any comments. Julie, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, this is a question for uh, Lancha Korn. Uh, I would like to know if uh, you are going to work on the measurement of carbon impact in the next phase of uh, the project and in uh, which countries of uh, Asia. Lancha Korn, did you hear the question Farid asked? Oh, okay. Now I'm unmute. Uh, okay, I, I hear the question. Thank you. Uh, we try to measure the, the impact of the carbon emission regarding our future project, but it is not in, in our indicator yet, but we try to do. And are you using a specific methodology or are you developing a methodology for that? Um, Actually, we have measured some impact of the integration of the climate relevant criteria in our existing project. We, we might learn to use that uh, method for our, our future measurement. Okay, thank yeah. you very much because uh, this is a, a theme of interest for uh, UNEP and we're organizing a a meeting in um, in Seoul next month on the topic, so we will be uh, contacting you for that. Okay, sure. Thank you. Can I have a question for uh, Kyung? Yes, go ahead, Farid. Yes, uh, Hyung, I'd like to know, please, if uh, what is the the current status of the uh, eco labeling scheme in in Vietnam? Uh, how many uh, companies are uh, currently certified, and what is the trend? Um, as I mentioned in my presentations, uh, very few companies already certify with the green labels, and uh, yeah. but uh, the trend is that um, the um, uh, VEA is uh, working uh, hard on uh, de developing uh, um, a number of uh, criteria for uh, for for other categories, and at the same time we plan to. Uh, uh, undertake the uh, more pr training and uh, awareness raising workshop for companies and enterprises so that the company uh, come to the office and 
and applied uh, to, uh, for the green uh, label activities. But I, uh, the the biggest uh, the biggest difficulties, uh, according to the uh, colleagues, my colleagues from the green label office, is the, uh, there is uh, really necessary to have the compulsory uh, requirement or regulations in in term of, of uh, uh, in in term of, of uh, public procurement, uh, yes. such, such term of public procurement. Uh, mm -hmm. The the very important point uh, I have mentioned in my presentation is in the new law, there is uh, the the compulsory requirement for uh, head of uh, organization, uh, director general of the company to uh, consider the uh, the sustainable public procurement. Uh, first, uh, I, I mean to consider and give priority to the uh, eco uh, label product first uh, when they come to the procurement. So that that is uh, compulsory. And at the moment, VA is working uh, with the Department of Public Assessment, trying to uh, uh, develop a circular which uh, provide in details uh, guidelines on how to integrate the criteria uh, uh, for uh, um, uh, eco-labeling uh, criteria in, in, in the whole process of public procurement. So that is uh, some of the trend in that VA is, is following at the moment. Thank you very much, Roman. Thank you very, for a very informative uh, presentation. Thank you, Fadi. Have any more questions? Julie, I cannot see who is raising uh, the, its hand. Can you see? Um, some did earlier on, but they have left. Okay. So you haven't muted everyone? Um, by default, yeah. And okay, if anyone wants to uh, ask a question, please go ahead. No, I, I, I don't think um, unmuting everyone is a good idea. Um, no, I, I don't see any raised hands. Okay, um, Farid, would you like to? I, I don't see any raised hands, so okay. Farid, would then you can uh, close. Please uh, then close the session. Okay, thank you, um, everyone, um, presenters and um, attendees. It was a very um, useful and informative session. And we look forward to the next webinar. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Hope to have you all in the next webinar. Thank you. Bye bye.